In this video, we want to look at factoring, just continuing our series that we started before. In this case, we want to look at factoring, very specifically, we want to look at factoring trinomials. Now remember that a trinomial is just a polynomial that has three terms. So your most basic trinomial is going to be of this form, ax squared plus bx plus c. And even the most basic form of this guy, what we want to look at first is when that lead coefficient, coefficient for x squared, we want to look at when this guy is equal to 1. Now, here's one of the things you want to remember. If we go back and we think about when we multiplied. Now, remember that factoring is just taking multiplication and going backwards. If we were asked to multiply x plus 5 times x plus 3. Well, the way that we would multiply this is just use the FOIL method. So when we FOIL, remember we're looking for the product of the first terms, product of the outside terms, inside, and then finally the product of the last terms. So when I multiply this, the product of the first terms, x times x is x squared. Product of the outside terms, x times 3 is 3x. Then I look at the product of the inside terms. 5 times x gives me a positive 5x. And then 5 times 3 is the product of the last terms, and that's 15. This is what we did for the FOIL method. And then we look to see if there was more work that could be done here. Uh, can we combine anything? Can we simplify? And when I look at this, you're going to see that your x squared is still x squared but your outside and inside pieces will combine to give you 8x and then your last term is still positive 15. Now if we understand what happens when we multiply then I hope we can see what happens whenever we factor and we go backwards. So that's what we want to take a look at here. If I ask you to factor and you know what? Let's start with x squared plus 8x plus 15. Let's see, how do we go backwards? What's the thought process? Well, we understand that with most trinomials, it came from multiplying two binomials like I see up here. So I expect this guy to factor as the product of two binomials. Well, what if I factor it this way, when I look at how it comes about, we need to understand that the x squared came from the product of the first terms, which means that it came from, look up here, it came from combining and multiplying these guys right here. That gave me the x squared. Well, if I'm trying to break this guy up, I'm trying to think, okay, how does x squared break up? Into what two pieces does it break into? And that, of course, is going to be x and x. We see where it came from, so we know where we're going to go. Well, I know that up here, we did the outside, the inside, and then the last. But I want you to see where the last piece came from, because he was only the product of two pieces, as opposed to the outside and inside, which came from multiplying two pieces together and then adding some stuff. So the 15 came from doing the 5 times the 3. Well, if that came from multiplying the last pieces to give me this constant, when I go to factor and I break it up through multiplication, I'm trying to break up the 15 to be in the last two places here. Now, there are a lot of different ways we can factor 15. And what we're going to get in the habit of doing is listing all of our factors. 15 can be 1 times 15. It can also be 3 times 5. There are a lot of, I mean, I could put either one of these guys in here, but there's only going to be one combination that's going to give me the 8x. Now look where the 8x came from. The 8x from before came from combining these middle pieces. You got the 5x right here, the 3x was on the outside, so 3 and 5 gave me 8. So what I'm trying to factor, I'm trying to find those factors of 15 that will add to give me the 8. And the combination that gives that to me is the 3 and the 5. 
So when I break the 15 down, I'm going to use a plus 3 and a plus 5. And so it should be fairly easy to check this. When I multiply the first terms, x times x is x squared. I multiply the last terms, 3 times 5 is 15. And then we check the inside and outside pieces. The inside parts of the FOIL method give me a positive 3x. And on the outside, I get a positive 5x. And when I combine these guys, there is your positive 8x. So that's what we want to try to do in these examples when we're trying to factor. So my result here is the x plus 3 times the x plus 5. Well, let's try another example and see if we can make the same connections here. So we kind of have a form, kind of a template that we're going to work off of. And let's see what we can do. So let's factor this guy. I'm going to give you x squared plus 12x plus 32. We see that here uh, there's no common factor other than 1. Now, the first thing you're always going to want to look for is that common factor. Well, after that, you want to see, okay, what kind of polynomial do I have? I've got a guy that's got three terms here. So I expect him to factor as the product of two binomials. So I'm going to go ahead and get my parentheses there. Just like in this last example, I'm trying to figure out how to break down the x squared. Well, before, I saw the x squared broke down as x times x, and the same thing's going to happen here. x squared becomes x times x. Then my next thought is, what am I going to do with that 32? How can I break down 32 in such a way that I'm going to get the 12 back out? Because that 12 is going to come from doing the inside and the outside pieces, but I can't do that until I break down the, t the 32. Look at your factors for 32. 1 goes in 32 times, 2 goes in 16 times, 3 does not go in, but 4 goes in 8 times. And those are all of the factors that we have for 32. Now, we have to multiply to get a positive, so what we're going to know about signs is they have to be the same sign. Either two positives or two negatives. Well, since this guy's positive, that tells me I should be using positive numbers here. So both of these guys are going to be positive. And which of these combinations will combine to give me a 12? Well, it just happens to be the 4 and the 8. So here's 4 and 8. Now, we always have to multiply to check our answer. Well, let's do this. x times x gives you x squared. Positive 4 times positive 8 is positive 32. And then we're going to move on to the inside and outside pieces. So this is a positive 4x when I multiply on the inside. On the outside is a positive 8x. And when I combine these guys, I get 12x. So I know that my work is right. I've been able to multiply it back out. I've checked everything. So now we just box this. Now in the next videos, we're going to see what happens if it's not all positive. So I've been too nice for you. Let's see what happens when we change the signs.